The Hedgehog, also known as an anti-submarine projector, was a forward-throwing anti-submarine weapon that was used during the Battle of the Atlantic in the Second World War. The device, which was developed by the Royal Navy, fired up to 24 spigot mortars ahead of a ship when attacking a U-boat. It was deployed on convoy escort warships such as destroyers and corvettes to supplement the depth charges. As the mortar projectiles employed contact fuses rather than time or barometric, depth, fuses, detonation occurred directly against a hard surface such as the hull of a submarine making it more deadly than depth charges, which relied on damage caused by hydrostatic shockwaves. Statistics show that in the Second World War out of 5,174 British depth charge attacks there were 85.5 kills, a ratio of 60.5 to 1. In comparison, the Hedgehog made 268 attacks for 47 kills, a ratio of 5.7 to 1. Development The Hedgehog, so named because the empty rows of its launcher spigots resembled the spines of a hedgehog, was a replacement to the unsuccessful Fairley mortar that was trialed aboard HMS Whitehall in 1941. Although a failure, the Fairley was designed to fire depth charges ahead of a ship when attacking a submarine. This principle of forward firing projectiles was considered viable. It was from this that secret research undertaken by the Directorate of Miscellaneous Weapons Development, DMWD, led to the development of the Hedgehog. The weapon was a multiple spigot mortar or spigot discharger, a type of weapon developed between the wars by Lt. Col. Stuart Blacker, R.A. The spigot mortar was based on early infantry trench mortars. The spigot design allowed a single device to fire warheads of varying size. The propelling charge was part of the main weapon and worked against a rod, the spigot, set in the base plate which fitted inside a tubular tail of the bomb. This principle was first used on the Blacker Bombard 29mm spigot mortar and the later Piat anti-tank weapon. The adaptation of the Bombard for naval use was made in partnership with Mir, C., under Major Millis Jefferis who had taken Blacker's design and brought it into use with Army. The weapon fires a salvo of 24 bombs in an arcade aimed to land Indiana a circular or elliptical area about 100 feet, 30 m, in diameter at a fixed point about 250 yards, 230 m, directly ahead of the attacking ship. The mounting initially was fixed but was later replaced by a gyro-stabilized one to allow for the rolling and pitching of the attacking ship. The system was developed to solve the problem of the target submarine disappearing from the attacking ship's astic when the ship came within the sonar's minimum range. Due to the speed of sound in water, the time taken for the ping echo to return to the attacking ship from the target submarine became too short to allow the human operator to distinguish the returning audible echo from that of the initial sound pulse emitted by the sonar the so-called instantaneous echo, where the output sound pulse and returning echo merge. This blind spot allowed the submarine to make evasive maneuvers undetected while the ship was still out of range for depth charge attack, the submarine being effectively invisible to the sonar as the ship came within the sonar's minimum range. The solution was a weapon mounted on the foredeck that discharged the projectiles up and over that carrying ship's bow, to land in the water some distance in front of the ship while the submarine was still outside the sonar's minimum range. History the Hedgehog entered service in 1942. Carrying a torpex charge weighing 16 kilograms, 35 pounds, each mortar had a diameter of 18 centimeters, 7.1 in, and weighed about 29.5 kilograms, 65 pounds. The projectiles were angled so they would land in a circular shape with a diameter of 40 m, 130 feet, about 180 m, 590 feet ahead of a stationary ship. The projectiles would then sink at about 7 m s, 23 feet s. They would reach a submerged U-boat, for example at 200 feet, 61 m, in under 9 seconds. Sympathetic detonation of projectiles near those contacting hard surfaces was a possibility, but the number of explosions counted was usually fewer than the number of projectiles launched. The prototype launcher was tested aboard HMS Westcott in 1941, but there were no submarine kills until November 1942, after it had been installed aboard 100 ships. 
initial success rates of about 5% were only slightly better than depth charges. Swells and spray frequently covered the launcher during heavy North Atlantic weather, and subsequent attempts to launch often revealed firing circuit problems launching an incomplete pattern. The disappointment of a quiet miss discouraged crews who might otherwise assume depth charge explosions had damaged their target or at least frightened the enemy. The Royal Navy launched Hedgehog so seldom in early 1943 that a directive was issued ordering captains of ships equipped with Hedgehog to report why they had not used Hedgehog on an underwater contact. The results were blamed on crew inexperience and low confidence in the weapon. However, after an officer from the DMWD was sent to London Derry Port, where the convoy crews were based, with better training and shipwide talks on examples of successful Hedgehog attacks, the kill rate improved considerably. By the end of the war, statistics showed that on average, one in every five attacks made by Hedgehog resulted in a kill, compared to less than one in 80 with depth charges. In response to this new deadly threat to its U-boats, the Kriegsmarine brought forward its program of acoustic torpedoes in 1943, beginning with the Falk. These new homing torpedoes could be employed effectively even without the use of a periscope providing submarines a better chance to remain undetected and evade counterattack. In the Pacific Theater, USS England sank six Japanese submarines in a matter of days with Hedgehog in May 1944. In 1946, USS Solar was destroyed after one of her crewmen accidentally dropped a Hedgehog charge near one of her main turret ammunition rooms, triggering three subsequent and devastating explosions. Operational Usage the launcher had four cradles, each with six launcher spigots. The firing sequence was staggered so all the bombs would land at about the same time. This had the added advantage of minimizing the stress on the weapon's mounting, so that deck reinforcement was not needed, and the weapon could easily be retrofitted to any convenient place on a ship. Reloading took about three minutes. The Hedgehog had four key advantages over the depth charge. An unsuccessful attack does not hide the submarine from sonar. When a depth charge explodes it can take 15 minutes before the disturbance can settle down enough that sonar becomes effective. Many submarines escaped during the time after an unsuccessful depth charge attack. Since hedgehog charges only explode on contact, sonar tracking of the submarine is less likely to be disrupted by an unsuccessful hedgehog attack. Although knowledge of target depth was less important, the Hedgehog was less successful against deep targets. Doctrine based on combat experience discouraged use on targets deeper than 400 feet, 120 m. Proximity weapons, such as depth charges, need to be set for the target's correct depth to be effective. Contact fused charges do not have that limitation, and an explosion at the time predicted for the contact fused projectile to reach the target depth may indicate a hit. The weapon gives no warning of the attack. Until depth-finding sonar became available, the first was the Royal Navy's Q attachment in 1943, there was a dead period during the final moments of the attack when the attacker had no knowledge of what the target was doing. U-boat commanders became adept at sharp changes of direction and speed at these moments, thus making the attack less accurate. A head-thrown weapon such as Hedgehog did not give the target the necessary warning of when to dodge. A direct hit by one or two hedgehog bombs was usually sufficient to sink a submarine. Many depth charges were required in order to inflict enough cumulative damage to sink a submarine, even then, many U-boats survived hundreds of detonations over a period of many hours 678 depth charges were dropped against U-427 in April 1945. The depth charge, usually exploding at a distance from the submarine, had a cushion of water between it and the target which rapidly dissipated the explosive shock. The Hedgehog's contact charge, on the other hand, had the cushion on the other side, actually increasing the explosive shock. However, near misses with the Hedgehog did not cause cumulative damage as depth charges did, nor did it have the same psychological effect as a depth charge attack. Derivatives and Successors in late 1943 the Royal Navy introduced Squid. This was a three-tubed mortar that launched depth charges. Initially it was used as a single weapon, but when this failed to be successful, it was upgraded to the double Squid that consisted of two launchers placed in parallel. 
In 1955 this system was upgraded to the three-barreled limbo that launched 400 pounds, 180 kilograms, mine all charges. The United States produced a rocket version of Hedgehog called Mousetrap, then Weapon Alpha as a replacement for both. Still, Hedgehog remained in service with the United States Navy into the Cold War until both Hedgehog and the less satisfactory Weapon Alpha were replaced by Oshrock. Three hedgerow flotillas of specialized landing craft assault boats carrying the Hedgehog instead of troops were used during the Normandy landings. An addition of impact fuse extensions in the projectile noses enabled detonating the warheads above ground. The bombs were used to clear 100-yard wide paths through mines and barbed wire obstacles on the beach. The Australian Army adapted the Marine Hedgehog into a land-based seven-shot launcher that could be mounted on the back of Matilda tanks. From 1949, a copy of Hedgehog was produced in the USSR as MBU-200, developed in 1956 into MBU-600, also known as RBU-6000, with increased range of 600 meters, 2,000 feet. Weapons derived from the Hedgehog have been largely phased out from Western navies in favor of homing torpedoes. MBU-600 and its derivatives remain an important part of Russian navies, as well as Russia's allies, such as India, anti-submarine arsenal to this day. Former Operators Royal Navy United States Navy Royal Canadian Navy United States Navy General Characteristics Caliber, 7 in, 178 mm Weight, 65 pounds, 29 kilograms Shell Diameter 7.2 in, 183 mm. Shell length, 3 feet 10.5 in, 1181 mm. Explosive charge, 30 pounds, 14 kg, TNT or 35 pounds, 16 kg, Torpex. Range, about 250 yd, 230 m. Sinking speed, 22 to 23.5 feet slash s, 6.7 to 7.2 m slash s. Fuse, contact, high explosive. Firing order, ripple in pairs, one every tenth of a second. Reload time, three minutes. Variance. Mark 10, elliptical pattern measuring about 140 by 120 feet, 43 m times 37 m to a range of 200 yards, 180 m. Mark 11, circular pattern measuring 200 feet, 61 m, in diameter out to a range of about 188 yards, 172 m. Mark 15, pattern as for the Mark 11 but mounted on a platform adapted from that of a quadruple 40 mm Bofors gun mount. The Mark 15 could be fired remotely from the ship's plotting room. Type Anti-Submarine Mortar Place of Origin United Kingdom Service History In service 1942 Used by Royal Navy United States Navy United States Navy Royal Canadian Navy Production History Designer Directorate of Miscellaneous Weapons Development Designed 1941 Specifications Shell 65 pounds, 29 kilograms. Caliber 7 in, 178 millimeters. Barrels 24. Effective firing range 200 M, 656 850 feet. Filling 30 pounds, 14 kilograms, TNT or 35 pounds, 16 kilograms, Torpex. Detonation. Mechanism. Contact. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.